Shag one, two. Hey now. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. There you go. There you go. Good to see y'all this morning. I hope that it, it, it has already been a tremendous day in the Lord. We had our sunrise service at 7. and hey, yes. We'll talk a little more about that in a little bit. Our choir has been working very, very hard the last couple of months, getting a few songs together for us. We're going to start with one this morning. So y'all give them a hand as they sing today. It's good to see all of you today. Happy, happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday is what we should say. And uh, we are chock full of announcements today, so I'm going to get right to this. Uh, after I welcome our visitors, if you're visiting with us this morning for the very first time, it is great that you have chosen to be a part of our worship service today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We know that you could have chosen to be anywhere else or nowhere at all. So we're excited that you stopped in uh, to visit with us today. There is a connection card that sits on either end of the pew. If you would take one of those, give us a little information. We'll collect that from you here in a little bit during the service. If you're watching on Facebook Live, it's awesome to have you. Thank you so much for being a part of, of uh, today's 
services. Just a few things. Um, you can see some announcements there. Our uh, Lily's here. You can see that Ken and Nan donated those. Uh, our senior worship uh, brunch with uh, Barb Walker is coming up later in the month. Our ladies' Bible study on Tuesday mornings. Looking for Carolyn down there. She's up here. Uh, that is now in Ephesians on uh, April 25th is when that begins. Our family fellowship nights, our quarterly conference is coming up on the 16th. Our women's trip over to the Angel Oak uh, is going there. And I have a note about that. And um, I have no idea what that says. <laughs> a little help, Keith. Okay. All right. So 29th of eight. Next, next week, okay. Next week, ladies are going to meet right after church for 10 to 15 minutes. Got it, okay. Um, so make sure, ladies, if you're going to that, I think there's still time to sign up. Uh, also, this morning, if you ate breakfast with us out here, you will notice there were some centerpieces that were made. Our kids made those centerpieces. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. And if you look close enough, uh, I wanted to take one of these home, but if I do it, I know that I'll eat it. But Brother Joe has made us some Easter Twinkie cars out there. And uh, that was just a great, great idea. And our children like that. So, and then also, right after church this morning, I think we're going to have a, a, an Easter egg hunt for the kids. So be outside. Hopefully it'll be dry enough out there to be able to do that this morning or this afternoon. So... Anyway, is that, uh, that's what I have in way of announcements. Anything other? BBS sign-up sheet. Don't forget about that. Galactic Starveyors this year is the theme. If you have not already signed up and would like to participate in helping us with that, it's coming up uh, towards the end of June. So we desperately need your help and would love for you to be a part of that. What else am I missing? Annie Armstrong. Well, let me say that. Thank you, uh, Dave. Our, our goal for... Uh, the, the whole year was $1,500. Well, you folks have surpassed that and buried it in the ground, and uh, we are up over $2,000 now for that day. So thank you. Awesome stuff. Anything further? What a day it is. It is just a joy to be in God's house today to celebrate the risen Savior. We don't celebrate Muhammad. We don't celebrate Buddha and the guy that gives out the flowers with the bald head at the airport, we don't talk about him. But um, we celebrate a risen Savior, and his name's Jesus Christ. And, uh, and he loves us. He sure does. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Lord, you just bestow so much on us. And uh, we just uh, know that you love us unconditionally. Lord, we're just so thankful for this day that we remember year-round what you did for us. But this day, Lord, is kind of a pinpoint time that we really celebrate your resurrection. Uh, Father, so we are just so grateful for what you did for us so long ago, providing a way for us to be able to live with you through eternity. So, Lord, bless us as we strive to honor you today through our service. I'm thankful for each one here and uh, each person, each family that's represented, Lord. Well, we know that they love you. We know, Father, that, uh, that you love them. So bless our service in a mighty way, and we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're excited this morning, too. It's, we're going to move fast today, but uh, our children's choir has been working on a song or two, and uh, I know that Miss Adrian and Miss uh, Suzanne and some others have been uh, diligently working with the children, so they are uh, getting their shoes on, and they're coming on down front here, so y'all give them a hand as they come together.
hand. Amen. And as they're up and about, let's all fellowship one with another. Make sure you tell somebody that you and Jesus both love them very much. Yeah. 
seated. God bless you. Good morning. I need my little peeps and chicks to come back up here and help me pass out something. Okay? I need some help. I need you to pass these out to everyone, okay? We need them up in the choir. Take them up in the choir. Here you go. Here you go. Let's pass them out so everybody will have some. You got them? Here we go. Got it? Here's some more. Okay, you can go ahead and start passing them out. Here you go. Here's some more. Here's Sophie, Sophie. There you go. Okay, you ready? Okay. That way we can make sure. Uh-oh, one drop. Can you get it? Can you get it? There you go. Go ahead, grab them. Let's pass them out and share them with everybody. So we're sharing this morning. I love that our children know that this is their church and that they're involved with our church, their church. Okay, you need some more? You got them? Okay. (laughs) We good? (laughs) Okay. And kiddos, you can keep you one. If we've run out, I'll give another one to you at the end of the day. Okay? Oh, there we go. Looky there. That's perfect. There you go. So this right here, if you look in your bag, the little eggs, they have jelly beans in them. And there's a little jelly bean poem that I'm going to read to you. It's called The Jelly Bean Gospel. Red's the blood that Jesus shed, white's the perfect life he led. Black is for my heart of sin, green, new life I've found in him. Pink for flowers near his grave, blue's the world he came to save. Purple, temple veil, now torn. Orange the sky on Easter morn. Yellow is my happy grin to know that Jesus rose again. I hope that you'll enjoy this treat of jelly beans so small and sweet. The news they share is short but true. Jesus died because he loves you, you. So empty the bag, and when you do, remember his tomb is empty too. So that's your jelly bean gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, children. Didn't they do a great job this morning? Amen. See, there's jelly beans in here. Ha! Ah, all right. Just what I need. Let's stand together. Let's sing a little more this morning. Christ arose. Let's sing about it today.
and aren't you glad he does? Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Let us pray. Lord, we just want to love, want to say thank you for your love and patience and sending your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins on the cross. We want to thank you for this great country and the freedoms that you have given and those that fact sacrificed to provide those freedoms for us, to allow us to worship you and give thanks without fear. We ask you to put a healing touch on those who are physically sick. You know them, their ailments better than anyone. We ask you to heal them and provide strength to their family. We ask you to help those who are suffering economically, individuals that have lost their jobs or just struggling to put food on the table. And we ask you to bring them resources to bring situation. We pray for the lost and lonely, Heavenly Father, those individuals that have rejected you or don't know you. We ask that you melt their hearts, open their eyes, and that they don't turn away from you, Lord. We want to give thanks for just providing us the support of a loving church, those individuals here that support each of us in the storms of life, the love, the patience, the wisdom, the guidance, and the, most importantly, the fellowship and the witness, Lord. Thank you for this family. We pray for the church leaders. We pray for Pastor Steve, his wife Lisa, school day, schools, Sunday school teachers, and the deacons and leadership of this church, Lord. We may draw closer to you and move forward with your will. I also pray for the nation's leaders. Provide them guidance to negotiate this geopolitical landscape. Listen to you and put the faith in you, Lord. I want to give thanks to the soldiers, servicemen, and first responders that have answered our nation's call and their family's sacrifice to keep us safe and secure, especially those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. And we want to just thank you for the abundance of blessings that you provided us and the joy that we take in them, and that we, as we give back a small portion of that, we ask you that you bless the giver and the recipient that, so that your kingdom will continue to grow. Which is loving you and thank you. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. The name of that song was Beyond the Cross. And uh, just a beautiful, beautiful song, Beyond the Cross. There's a tomb that is empty. You won't find him there anymore. That's what that song says. And what a day it is to rejoice about that today. Choir's going to sing a couple more for you now. So y'all pray for us as we sing together.
with me as we sing this morning. We are in the house of the Lord today. Let's sing about it. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory, yes he does. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, and we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Come on, sing it. We sing to the God who hears. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes the way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yes, he is. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And He won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing grace. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. God bless you. You may be seated. What a song, being in the house of the Lord. We were beggars, but now we're royalty in the eyes of God. Amen. What a blessing. I just want to reflect for just a moment uh, this morning. Uh, most of you were here for our sunrise service, had a great crowd for our sunrise service, and it looks like the sun is finally up for the first time in the last few days, so that's wonderful. But I wanted just to take just a minute, I wanted to thank Billy and I wanted to thank Keith. Uh, those two gentlemen did a wonderful job this morning uh, giving their testimony. And yes, just sharing what the Lord has done in their lives. And, uh, you know, we all have things. We all have things that we deal with and places we come from, things, places we're going, things that we do. 
And uh, it's just good to see these two young men uh, willing to get up and share what Jesus has done for them in their lives. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, if you noticed on the way going out of here, there is a beautiful floral cross on that right side. And uh, Miss Van Aden putting that together for us. I, I went to her a couple of months ago, and I said, I'd like to have a cross that's got flowers on it. And she said, okay. <laughs> that was it. So what y'all see this morning is her vision and how she saw that. And it's beautiful. And uh, there's already been some pictures being taken around that cross. I think we can do some more afterwards. Lisa's got her Nikon. If somebody would like to have that kind of picture, you can do that as well. But uh, it's been a busy, busy day, and a lot of... Uh, Jesus just moving, the Holy Spirit moving, and I know that he's going to continue to do that. I know those gentlemen this morning were nervous, but, uh, but uh, it wasn't nerves of, um, of not wanting to do what God wanted him to do, but nerves that it came across in such a way that, uh, that he could get the glory for it. And we have another person that's coming now uh, that I know is nervous. I'm not going to look that way, um, but uh, Trish is a new member of our church. She's been with us now for quite some time. And uh, she's coming to sing for us. So I'm just going to get out of the way and uh, let Trish come. Deliver me. 
said. Amen. Amen. No need to preach after that, eh? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Trish. It has been a wonderful, wonderful day. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yes, he is. Believe it. Believe it. Everybody say that with me. Believe it. Believe, it. Believe what? Believe Jesus is risen from the dead. Yes. Believe it. It's a fact. It's not a fairy tale. It's a fact. Well, happy Resurrection Day. It's already been wonderful. Uh, these gentlemen, Trish, our choir, our children's choir, man, there's been a lot of moving parts today, and uh, God is good, and He has blessed every ounce of what it is that's been happening here this day, and uh, just an honor to be here with you to do that. So just... Um, Sometimes I get at a loss for words just to know exactly what to say, but God knows my heart, and uh, he knows that I appreciate each and every one of you for what you do. I mean, it's, it took a lot to make this day happen today from start to finish, and uh, a lot of good people uh, giving their all to take care of that. Well, Easter's always been special. It's been an, an emotional time for me. I've um, been celebrating Easter all of my life um, with my family keeping us in church as, as we were little boys, and and um, just have always enjoyed this time of year, uh, not only because of the springtime and the, the flowers and all of that kind of thing, but for what Jesus did, what Jesus did. And I've understood this for many, many years, and uh, just it still chokes me sometimes to the core to think about what Jesus did. And I'm glad that he did it for y'all, I really am, but he did it for me. And he did it for all of us. We could all say that. He did it for all of us. Um, I have a Bible, not this one, but I have a Bible that indexes the events of Holy Week or Passion Week, as we, we spoke about that last Sunday, about the triumph and entry into Jerusalem and, and all the events that happened um, about that week. And I, I bought it years ago. I just recently purchased it. And I remember just being taken by studying that section and being able to look at the chronological order as to how things actually happened during that week to the best of our interpretation as to how we can how we can understand that but being able to compare that list that that bible had in it to what the scriptures read and being able to see that it just kind of brought those pages to life for me to be able to take a look at i remember i had that bible with me i would take it to work with me that week i used to be a banker uh, years ago, I was a consumer loan officer for uh, what is now known as bb and It went through several mergers before then. Uh, First Savings Bank is what it was called back in those days. But there was a, a, a good group of uh, fellow bankers there from our teller line, our other officers at the bank, and all of us, we, we were all Christians. We didn't all go to the same church, but we were very uh, blessed to have a bank full of Christians who, who all believed in Jesus. And it was good to be able to take, I had that Bible with me, and I would take it with me, and I would share those things with my co-workers. And, and we would begin to take, we'd, we'd have just little mini Bible studies at work behind the teller line. And uh, we would study these things together when there weren't customers, sometimes when there were. But, but the triumphant entry, the Last Supper, the betrayal, the arrest, the trial, the conviction, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, we, we went through that entire line of all of those things. And we did that every year out of that little study Bible, that one of the first study Bibles that I ever bought. We used it. And in fact, there's people all over the world that recognize this time of year for these things. But the question is this. Do they believe it? Do we believe it? <laughs> Sermon with sound effects today. That doesn't happen, just, and that couldn't have been better timing, so that was really good. <laughs> believing it. You see, believing it has to be the absolute central focus of this entire line of chronological events. Believing it. It's hearing it without believing it doesn't make the difference in our lives. 
We could hear it all day, every day, till the cows come home. But if we don't believe it in our hearts, then it makes no difference to us in our lives. So believing it, we must believe what God's Word says. We must also believe that even though Jesus really died that day on the cross, He also rose again three days later, and He lives today, and He will live forevermore. Now, all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, give us their account of this resurrection story or this resurrection truth. And this morning, we're going to take a really good close look at the account of John. So turn over there with me, if you would, chapter 20, and we're going to read the first 18 verses together. So would you stand with me, and we will read those together. John chapter 20, Gospel of John chapter 20. Verses 1 through 18. Thank you. I heard it. Somebody else, if you got it, say, I got it. There you go. That one just kind of stuck. I've been doing that for six years here, so kind of stuck. Amen. Reads this way. This is God's Word. Since early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it? you were looking for. Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Father, what a passage of Scripture that we have to be able to go back to, to see these events that we know that are truths. Bless us today as we dig a little deeper here. Help us, Father, to see what the Holy Spirit wants us to see. Help us to see what it is that you have for us. And Father, we just uh, praise you for what you're going to do in our our midst today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Now again, this is a familiar passage of Scripture, such a familiar passage of Scripture, and it's been read and it's been preached by thousands of of preacher on preachers on thousands of different occasions from thousands of different angles, and you hear this story at Easter. Uh, this one, the the passage that we read at Christmas, um, they're all just really familiar passages that we hear time and time again every year. Um, if you were to ask anyone, pretty much, to give you some sort of summary about these pages, I believe. Uh, that they could give you some sort of summary. Even if they're not a believer, I believe they could give you some sort of summary as to what they believe that this passage is talking about. And it's, it's just interesting that it's been called many, many times the greatest stories ever told. We've heard that. There's a reason for that. The reason is, is they are the greatest stories. 
ever told. That they're not just any old stories, they're Bible truths. They are the truth. They're the truth as we believe what God's Word is to say. So again, we believe this to be fact. We don't believe it to be a fable. We don't think that it is some sort of fairy tale. We don't think that it's a a fictitious story that some author of a novel wrote and just put down on some pages. We don't believe that it's anything like that at all. We don't think anybody dreamed this up to write it as a novel of any kind. No, it's the truth. And every one of these words was completely inspired by the Almighty God. That's where it came from. No Hollywood producer can write it. No Hollywood producer can produce it. It begins and it ends with Jesus. That's how it started and that's how it will end. Now Mary Magdalene, I believe, may in some respects have been a lot like us. She was a person that had feelings. She had emotions that would have been seen by others, just like all of us would have. Now we know that through the Passion Week, she had had felt these emotions. Things were really just swirling in her life. She had felt sorrow. She had felt fear. She had felt agony. She had felt anger. She had felt disappointment. Tremendous grief over the death of the Lord. She had walked with Jesus. She had talked with Jesus, and she had watched his trial. She was at the cross to watch him draw his last breath. So for Mary, all hope was gone. Her friend, her Savior, was dead. When she arrived at the tomb on that Easter morning before dawn, she began to even have calls for more emotion. As we see what this truth tells us, the stone that had been sealed around this entryway to the grave was gone. It had been rolled away from the entrance of the tomb. There was nothing there but a, a hole to be able to gaze into. Now, if, if we could put ourselves into her shoes on that day, where would our anxiety level be? What would we be thinking? How would we begin to try and handle this in our own mind? Questions just began to swirl in her mind. Things were just completely going. I mean, what had happened? Why is the stone over here instead of over here? Why had it been rolled away? Her anxiety would have taken a turn to even more anxiety and despair as she discovered that not only had the stone been rolled away, but the body of her loved one was now missing. Missing in action. Her despair began to turn to tears as she realized that Jesus was no longer there. More questions would come. Where have they taken him? Had his body been stolen? She ran to where may have been the upper room. She found Peter and John. John is this other disciple that the Bible talks about. All three of them found their very faith being completely tested. Peter and John began to run towards the tomb to see for themselves, and John arrived first, and he stood at the very entrance of the tomb. Peter arrived and and went straight inside. What they found was the grave clothes of Jesus still lying in the same position as if he were still in them. Can you picture that? They weren't crumpled and thrown around. They were still in the grave clothes, still wrapped as if Jesus was still in them. There was no damage to them. The headdress was folded neatly or rolled neatly and placed where the head would have been. So this would not have been a robbery. There was no sign of anyone else have being in the tomb. There was no sign of others being there. Jesus was, Jesus was just gone. Just gone. The Lord, their teacher, their leader, was no longer in the tomb. The disciples had heard Jesus on a number of occasions 
speak about his resurrection. When Jesus was clearing the temple courts earlier that week, he told them of his coming resurrection. John chapter 2, I have this for you, verses 19 to 22 says it this way. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it up again in three days. They replied, it's taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it up in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. In Matthew, we see where Jesus made himself a comparison to the prophet Jonah. You remember we did an in-depth study of Jonah. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 says this, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. John, after Peter, went inside the tomb. And I like what verse 8 of our text today says. It says, finally, finally, the other disciple, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. And this is the best part. He saw and what? He believed. He saw and he believed. Now, he didn't, verse 9 tells us he didn't completely understand all of the biblical implications of what was happening at the time, but his faith was rising. His faith was increasing. John believed that he was alive, but he was trying to put it all together in his mind what was happening and then what would happen next. Mary, still in despair, asked this man who was standing to the side, whom she thought was the gardener, or thought was the, the caretaker of this garden of tombs, this cemetery where he thought Jesus might be. This man looked at her, called her name, Mary. Mary. She suddenly realized that she was looking face to face with Jesus Christ, her Lord, her Savior, her Teacher. She was looking at him. They were standing there together. Now this emotional Mary remained emotional, but now her emotions had changed from despair to sheer joy. He who was dead is now alive. Mary saw him. He was alive and he was well. She saw the living proof. Jesus then gave her some instructions and told her that she should go tell others what she had seen and she began to do what he had asked her to do. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, listen, is certainly nothing short of a miracle, is it? It's the most recognized miracle that we can think of in the world today and it will always be recognized that way. The birth of Christ the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, there are no miracles that can eclipse the importance of those. As we celebrated His resurrection around sunrise this morning, it reminded us of early that morning over 2,000 years ago when there was a true sunrise. S-O-N. A sunrise. This sunrise changed the world. It changed the world. It wasn't just any old regular sunrise. It was the sunrise. And it changed the world. Listen, his death paid the wages of our sin. Romans 6.23 tells us that. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift, everybody say gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, whether you know it or not, there is a price for the sin that's in our lives. That price or that wage, as this verse tells us, that penalty is death. We deserve the death penalty. Even though death is what we deserve, Jesus paid that wage through his death on the cross. In other words... Jesus paid our death penalty for us. 
When Jesus died, he did so to offer us something as free as free can be. A free gift. The gift, salvation from hell. Living with Jesus through eternity. Through the death or through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, we can have this salvation. Listen, we can have the joy that only Jesus can give. We can have redemption from our sin. We can have restoration of a life that is broken without Jesus, and it's free. It's freely offered to every one of us that are sitting here today and beyond. How can we receive this? Oh, pastor, it sounds great. This is something I want. But how do I get it? If you have these types of questions on this Easter Sunday, the answer is pretty simple. Believe it. Believe it. Just believe it. We must believe what the Scriptures say about Jesus and what He did for us. You got to believe it. Throughout our vacation Bible schools, we just talked about a new one that's coming up here in June, but we have them every year. We hold them for the summer. Children, children out of school, we do it for the kids during the summer. Most of them are the same when it comes to a, a gospel presentation day, is what we call it. We, we have one day during our Bible class that we intentionally share the gospel of Jesus. And to put it on a child's level is really the same as putting it on adults to level. It's the ABCs of salvation. We've heard of this. The A stands for admit. What do we have to admit? Before we can do anything, we must admit who we are. And who are we? Just sinners. That's who we are. Dirty, rotten scoundrels. That's who we are. Not deserving of anything. We were born into sin. Our very nature is sinful. We cannot help ourselves. Who we are. The B stands for what we're talking about today. We must believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for our sins and He rose three days later on what we celebrate is today, Easter. That's what it's about, believing that. The C stands for confess. Look with me in Romans chapter 10, verses 9, and then we'll look at 13 as well. Verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, y'all just help me say that. My goodness. You will be saved. Not might be, not could be, not probably. You will be saved if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. You will be saved. Verse 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, again, there it is, will be saved. Who's everyone? All of us. Some versions call it for whosoever. We're the whosoever's. I love those verses. I, I refer to those frequently. It's all inclusive. Everyone means everyone. All of us. No exceptions. If you choose to believe, then you will be saved. Doesn't matter what your status is. Doesn't matter who your friends are. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Oh, pastor, I've done some stuff. I don't know if Jesus can forgive me for what I've done. Yes, he can. He's not surprised by anything you've done. He can and he will if you ask. You only believe. 
Now listen, I, I want to make this point. Because there's a tremendous difference between believing it here and believing it here. It's not enough to just know about Jesus. You have to know Jesus in your heart. You have to know it. You have to have a sincere belief in Him that will help you to develop a relationship with Him. That's my prayer for you today. Now Mary, she arrived at this tomb that day. She was expecting to find a teacher who was dead. Instead, she found a Savior who was alive. That same Jesus lives today. So let me ask you, church, as you arrived here this morning, some of us at 7 a.m., some of us recently, what were you expecting to find? What is it you were looking for? What type of emotions were you having? What was your attitude and what was your belief towards Jesus? The stone that closed the tomb of Jesus has been rolled away. And what they believe to be the tomb of Jesus, listen, there's a sign that reads this. He's not here. He's risen. I hope to see that one day. Listen, on the day that Jesus died, He did so for you. He did so for me. On the third day when He arose, He did so for you. He did so for me. He lives today for all of us. Bible truth. The resurrected Christ who loves us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just have a question or two. Do you believe it this morning? Do you believe it? Is Easter just one of those days for you that you come to church out of obligation? Or do you truly believe what we're talking about this day? I pray that you do. I pray that there's no question in your mind that you have trusted Jesus as your Savior by admitting and believing and confessing who it is that you are. I truly hope that you have, but if you have not, today is the day to make that decision. Would you do that? Would you do that today if you don't know Jesus as your Savior? Jesus wants to save you. He's standing on the ready. He's just asking you to ask Him. Would you do that today? Jesus loves you. Where things of the earth, where things of life will fail you, listen, Jesus never fails. Would you come today? Would you come? Maybe you're here today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you know you should. Today's a great time to get that right with Him. You can always remember, I got it right on Easter Sunday. You come today. I'd love just a chance to pray with you. I'd love to do that. But you come today. However God is leading you, you come. Stand with me right where you are. As Suzanne plays, we're not going to belabor this. I know the hour's late. But you come today.
Suzanne, would you play one more verse? I'm going to ask you again, please come this morning. Don't let today pass you by that you don't make a decision that's going to change your life. You come today and give it to Jesus. Whatever is in your heart right now, whatever is in your life, wherever it is that you are right now, God is bigger than what you're dealing with. Just give it to Him. you this morning for being here. It has been a wonderful day in the Lord, and I am so grateful that you have chosen to be here to worship with us this day. Happy Easter to you. Happy Resurrection Day. Uh, there will be no evening uh, choir practice or worship this evening. Uh, enjoy some time with your families today, and uh, God bless you. We will resume again on Wednesday night with our Bible studies that we've been doing, and be on a regular schedule the rest of the week. But, uh, but God bless you. And uh, it's been a wonderful day in Jesus. Amen? Amen? Yes, it has. Let's pray together as we dismiss. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for your blessings, your love, your uh, mercy is just abounding and overflowing. We're just grateful for what you do in our lives. Thank you for this day. Keep us safe till we meet again. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. We'd like to thank you for joining us on Facebook Live this morning. I truly hope that you've been blessed by something that's been said this morning. We just want to glorify the Lord here at Cornerstone. I pray that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ today. If you don't know him, I pray that you have come to know him this morning as your personal Savior. If you have, drop us a line. You can go to cbcaken.com backslash contact. And you can leave me a message there. You can send me an email. It'll come directly to me. And that will let me know exactly what your decision for the Lord was. If you just need a prayer request, anything like that that you may need, that's a great place for you to go to do that. So join us again. We'll be live again on Facebook Live next Sunday morning at 1045. And then also on Wednesday nights, we're live at 630 for a Bible study. So join us. We'd love to see you there. Have a great, great day.